And now, the continuation of the Kingdom Principles of National Leadership. And see that his children obey him, and he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. Because if anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church or God's country? <clears throat> if, you, if you have a problem with budgeting in your family, how can I trust you? to balance the nation's budget. These are things we need to be looking at. He must not be a recent convert. Now, this right here is not talking about somebody new to the game. This is almost somebody who, is, who has not had any, has not had sufficient experience anywhere, whether it be in, 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 in the private sector or the public sector. If you have not had sufficient experience in any, and you don't have anything to bring to the table as a competency we're talking about, if you don't have anything to bring to the table in terms of experience or qualifications, you need to have gathered enough experience in any area, private sector or public sector, to be able to qualify for this level of leadership. No. He must not be a recent convert, or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. What was the devil's judgment? Pride. That was the devil's judgment. Pride. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. What is the devil's trap? Because he fell by pride, his trap is now going to be pride as well. So here we see qualities that God outlines for leadership. So that's why he's not going to tell you who to vote for. It's all right there. It's all right there. That is why on Friday, we must come out in mass to vote for the representation that we need to have. Voting is not only a right, but it is a responsibility of every citizen. It is a responsibility. The voting process is the collective voice of the people demanding the type of representation that they want. The collective voice of everybody. Voting does two things for the voter. It gives the voter the right to challenge any leader. Because you voted, you now have the right to challenge any leader in public office on anything that they are doing. Because if we don't challenge our leaders, then we have no right to complain about how they lead. However, if you don't vote, you forfeit that right. You forfeit that right. Voting gives you that leverage. If you don't vote, you can't talk. It's plain and simple. Number two, voting provides the voter with a certain level of responsibility. It makes the voter responsible for what is happening in the country. Why? Because whatever happens in the country for the next four years and beyond is partly because we, the electorate, put them there. So we are responsible partly for what happens. That is why it is important that we vote wisely. God created the institution. He gave the qualities that are needed to be seen in people that are in the institution. So we need to vote accordingly. Now, if you don't vote, 
you are showing your irresponsibility towards your country. It shows that you really don't care what direction the country goes in. So if we want people that, are, that, that, that actually care about the well-being of, 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 of the citizens and draft, because that's what parliament is all about, legislators, and draft, and amend and abolish laws that, 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 that benefit the citizens, if we want that, then we need to vote for people, representation, that God sanctions. Because Proverbs 29 and 2 says, when the uncompromisingly righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked man rules, the people groan and sigh. So what that is saying is that, listen, God put the responsibility of the country in the hands of us. And we put the people in there. So if the people in there are righteous, the country will rejoice. But if the wicked are in there because bad politicians, remember the opening quote, bad politicians are elected by good people who don't vote, if they are there and we groan, it's our fault. So every time we come and pray for the nation, we are asking God to intervene in something that he gave us full responsibility over. And we ask him to intervene in something that he already explained to us how we need to do it. So if we don't follow the instructions, we cannot get upset about the results. It's quiet in here, so that means y'all are thinking. People are always complaining that politicians are the same. That is because the majority of them, some of them, are candidates that don't fit God's criteria. There are a few here and there. Like we said, not all is going to show these, but if you cannot find across 15 seats all of these, we have a problem. That is why we need more authentic kingdom people getting involved in national affairs. If we keep complaining, we need more kingdom, authentic kingdom people getting involved in national affairs. If you keep saying politics is dirty, that's why you don't want to get involved, then everybody who has a child or who takes care of children, whenever that child's diaper is dirty, leave it there, don't change it. Because it's dirty. I don't want to touch it. You change it for that very same reason. It's dirty. So, if as kingdom people, we say we don't want to get involved in national affairs. J Jesus told us, go into the world. Government is part of that world. National leadership is part of that world part of that culture that kingdom people need to get involved in. Because if we can't find the proper representation that we need, who is going to represent kingdom people when they want to bring same-sex marriages on the table? Who is going to represent kingdom people where that is concerned? And then if you open the door to that, then you open the door to a whole domino effect of things, because then people are going to say, well, if it's their right to get married, then I can get married to three or four people, and I can get married to animals, and I can get married to a child. And, I can get and, we, and before you know it, you have redefined the entire system of family, and that country begins to implode, because there's no standard. So who's going to represent kingdom people in one of those 15 seats? If we are the light, then we need to bring light. 
prayer is good, but prayer, en- prayer is not enough. Because faith now needs to back up that prayer. And that faith is kingdom people stepping up to the challenge and getting involved. Because that is where all the prayer, prayer we've been praying, that is where the rubber meets the road. So in the next four years, um, this is speaking out to people that are in here. If you're aspiring to be in, 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 in any form of national affairs or national leadership, this is the criteria you need to work on. First Timothy 3, no, to begin to develop it. So that when you go, I don't want to say that because I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to act like I'm promoting a particular party. But you will be prepared. <laughs> I heard that, but I didn't want to say it. Until kingdom people step up to the challenge of running for public office, nothing will change. Nothing will change. God is looking for people, and I think he said that somewhere, I I think it's in Ezekiel. God looks to and fro on the earth for people that he can show himself strong on their behalf. Parliament is one of those places. He's looking for people that he can show himself strong on the people's behalf. But he can only do that through authentic kingdom people. Clap for that one. That, that was a good one. He can only do it through authentic kingdom people. If there is nobody there that he can work through, then he is limited. And if we want him to work in the nation, we need to have people that are open conduits for him to work through. But if there's no kingdom relationship there, he can't work. If there's no vertical relationship, there can't be no horizontal impact. I'm going to say it again. Whether we want to accept this fact or not, people in parliament and ministers make decisions for us, whether we, whether we like it Amen. or Amen. not. Amen. They make decisions for us. So what decisions do you want to be made? Think about it. What decisions do we want to be made? Hmm. Where do you want to see this country? Where do you want to see this country? That's something we need to be thinking about because now we need to be looking. Well, I am concerned now because I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to have children. So I want to know, well, what kind of country <laughs> am I going to be putting in place for them? And I'm getting old too. No, 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 I like, sorry, I'm getting wise. I'm getting, I'm getting wise. But these, these are some things that we need to start thinking about now. So my advice is after all of this information, this next week, this is the, this is the home stretch. After this week, you n- I would suggest that you try as much as possible to go to different rallies, to talk as much as possible to different um, candidates, hear what they're saying, use this as a measuring stick, and then make an informed decision on Friday. It's all about information. People perish because of a lack of knowledge. Perish simply means they get put in bad positions. They are placed in awkward positions because of a lack of knowledge. Now with this knowledge, ignorance, hopefully I have 
permanently damage the ignorance as far as politics is concerned and government, hopefully. But this is something I'll continue to teach. But listen, this is what we need. Proper representation. Kingdom representation. So my advice on Friday is vote, 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 vote. Because that is your right. That is your responsibility. But vote according to criteria. That's all time, please.